Every great team needs great individual players. These are the top 10 greatest individual seasons in NBA history. The criteria to make this top 10 is regular season and postseason performance, two-way dominance, accomplishments, historical significance, and team success. Number 10, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 2019-20 season. After winning the MVP in the previous season, Giannis was truly in his prime. Giannis led his Bucks to the one seed for the second straight season with a 56-17 record. Giannis would win his second straight MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year award in the same season, which has only been accomplished by Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan. Giannis averaged 29.5 points, 13.6 rebounds, and 5.6 assists, while also averaging one block and a steal. However, Giannis was unable to stay healthy during the playoffs and were eliminated by the Miami Heat in the East semifinals. Number 9, Michael Jordan 1987-88. The hardest part about Michael Jordan's inclusion on this list was deciding which seasons to name. There's a reason why he's known as the greatest player to ever play the game. We chose his phenomenal 88 season, namely because of the laundry list of honors he accumulated over the course of the season. He's the only player in NBA history to win a scoring title and a defensive player of the year in the same season. Jordan also recorded 200 steals, 100 blocks for the second year straight. Such two-way dominance on both ends of the floor is unrivaled. Jordan was arguably the best player on both ends on the floor in 1988. Because of this all-round superiority, Jordan picked up his first of five MVP awards. He also led his team to 50 wins in one of the strongest eras in NBA history. Statistically, MJ had few peers who averaged 35 points per game, shooting over 53% from the field while averaging a staggering 3.2 steals per game and 1.6 blocks. The Chicago Bulls were bounced by Isaiah Thomas and the Detroit Pistons in the playoffs, but Jordan proved once more that he's a big-time player, averaging 36.3 points, 7.1 rebounds and 4.7 assists in the postseason. He's the only player in NBA history to record back-to-back 50-point -back games in the playoffs, which he achieved against the Cavaliers in the first two games of the 88 postseason. Jordan's excellence, however, was merely a sign of things to come. Number 8, Wilt Chamberlain, 1961-62. Chamberlain rewrote the record books in 1962, averaging 50 points and 25 rebounds per game and establishing himself as one of the most dominant players to ever grace the court. Chamberlain scored 4,029 points in 80 games, over 1,500 more points than his nearest rival that year. He grabbed over 250 more rebounds than Bill Russell on his way to a rebounding title. Wilt also accumulated the second most defensive win shares, shot at the second highest percentage from the field, and never fouled out of a game. Perhaps most notably, Chamberlain scored 100 points in a single game on March the 2nd, 1962 against the New York Knicks. Only Kobe Bryant's 81 points has even come close to touching that mark. Despite his overwhelming dominance, Chamberlain's memorable 62 season somewhat foreshadowed his narrative for his career. Wilt averaged 50, but Russell best at him in the playoffs and won the MVP and the title. Throughout his career, Wilt's unparalleled dominance was unfairly overshadowed by his lack of team success, and this trend was never more evident than in the 62 season. Number 7, Magic Johnson 1987-88. Magic Johnson's 1987 season ranks as one of the best seasons ever because of his uncanny ability to run offense as efficiently as possible and make everyone around him better. After the 86 Celtics made their mark on the league by destroying almost everything in their path, Magic Johnson and the 87 Lakers returned with a vengeance to win 65 games in the regular season, capturing the NBA title. Magic averaged 23.9 points, 12.2 assists, and 5.9 rebounds, with 1.5 steals to top it off. Facing off against the rival Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals, Magic was simply brilliant. He averaged 26.3 points, 8 rebounds, and 13 assists, and recorded more steals than turnovers. Magic shot 54% from the field and missed only one three throw, and easily won his third Finals MVP in 8 years. In the closeout Game 6 in LA, Magic had 16 points, 19 assists, and 8 rebounds as the Lakers stormed to a 106-93 victory. Johnson was far and away the best player in the league in 1987, and his 87 season ranks as one of the best seasons ever by point guard. Number 6, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 1970-71 season. Kareem had his best season of his career in 1971, as he led the Milwaukee Bucks to a 66-16 record, as well as the NBA championship. Kareem shot an astonishing 57.7% from the field, while averaging 31.7 points on 16 rebounds. Blocks were not yet recorded until 1974, but Abdul-Jabbar led the league in block shots four times times after that, so it's likely he would have been a terrific interior defender. He was named to the all-defensive second team. The Bucks swept the Baltimore Bullets in the finals, and Kareem picked up his first finals MVP award after averaging 27 points, 18.5 rebounds, and 2.8 assists, shooting over 60% from the field. 1971 was just his second season in the league, as he picked up his first MVP award, finishing third in his rookie season behind Jerry West and Willis Reed. The 1971 Bucks featuring Abdul-Jabbar, Oscar Robertson, and Bobby Dandrix is considered to be one of the greatest teams ever assembled. They won 66 games in the 
the regular season and only lost two games in the entire postseason behind Kareem's legendary performance. Number 5, LeBron James 2011-12. As we all know, 2012 was a year of redemption for LeBron James and the Miami Heat. The King finally silenced his doubters and won a championship ring, solidifying his place amongst the greatest players of all time. The NBA's all-time leading scorer shot a career-high 53.1% from the field, which is an outstanding number for a high-volume perimeter scorer. James was equally dominant in the finals. He also finished top 5 in Defensive Player of the Year voting and was nominated to the All-NBA Defensive First Team for the fourth straight year. When taking into consideration LeBron's epic playoff run, it becomes clear that 2012 was his best season in a long career. Number 4, Hakeem Olajuwon, 1993-94. No one benefited more from Michael Jordan's absence than Hakeem Olajuwon. The 7-foot center from Nigeria won an NBA title, MVP, Finals MVP, and Defensive Player of the Year award in 1994 and produced a playoff and finals run for the ages. During the regular season, Hakeem finished top 5 in points, defensive rebounds, blocks, PER, defensive win shares, and total win shares. In the playoffs, he led a team with no other All-Stars and Eclipse Drexler's Trailblazers, Barkley's Suns, the Stockton Malone Jazz, and New Wings Knicks to become an NBA champion. Few players succeeded as much with as little help as a large one in 1994 and 1995 as Hakeem was the only All-Star on the squad. Hakeem averaged 27.3 points, 11.1 rebounds, and an otherworldly 3.7 blocks, which was down from his 4.2 he accumulated the season prior. Number 3, Michael Jordan, 1995-96. In the 1994-95 season, the Chicago Bulls did not play to expectations, especially because Michael Jordan was off playing baseball. However, later in the season, Jordan made a surprise comeback. However, his comeback didn't significantly help the team's fortunes as they lost to the Orlando Magic in the second round of the playoffs. Starts coming into the 1995-96 NBA season, Jordan had never been more motivated to get back on top. Jordan and the Bulls were unstoppable in the regular season as Chicago won 72 games as Jordan provided 30.4 points with 6.6 rebounds and 2.2 steals per contest. Chicago only lost one game on the way to the finals, including a sweep of Miami and Orlando while beating the Knicks in just five games. Seattle were a tough matchup in the finals for any other team but this Bulls team, as Chicago would win in six games. Jordan was guarded by Gary Payton in five and six, which helped to turn the series around, but Michael Jordan was still too good. Number two, Michael Jordan, 19 1990-91. Michael Jordan's seventh season in the league was arguably his best as a pro. He finally overcame the Detroit Pistons, sweeping them in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then proceeded to win his first championship ring, defeating Magic Johnson and the Lakers in the NBA Finals. Jordan was unstoppable throughout the regular season with averages of 31.5 points, with six rebounds and 2.7 steals. The postseason featured Jordan capturing his second MVP award and his first Finals MVP. He led the league in scoring, PER, and win shares, as well as making the All-NBA and All-NBA defensive first teams. His Bulls won 61 games in the regular season and only dropped two in the playoffs. After losing the first game in the finals, Jordan famously proclaimed that the Bulls would sweep the rest of the series and they did exactly that, winning four straight games in relatively convincing fashion. During the finals, MJ showed his ability to take on multiple roles within the offense. He played a point guard for much of the series and ended up leading the Bulls in both points and assists. His finals averages were 31.2 points, 6.6 rebounds and 11.4 assists with 2.8 steals and 1.4 blocks. Number 1, Shaquille O'Neal 1999-2000 Shaq was the most dominating player since Michael Jordan, but in this season perhaps even greater than anything MJ did in one year. From start to finish, O'Neal was absolutely unstoppable. O'Neal was never known to be a tremendous shot blocker, but he averaged three blocks per game in the regular season and finished second in Defensive Player of the Year voting. He's an underrated passer who averaged 3.8 assists from the center position, and for a guy who never led the league in rebounding, 13.6 per game is pretty darn good. He collapsed defenses, creating easier scoring opportunities for his teammates. He demanded double teams at all times, and he was an imposing force in the paint on both sides of the court. Shaq averaged 30.7 points, 15.4 rebounds, and 3.1 assists in the regular season. He upped that to 38 points, 16.7 rebounds, 2.3 assists, and 2.7 blocks per game, shooting above 61% from the field in one of the greatest finals performances in NBA history. In the regular season, Shaquille exceeded 40 points on nine different occasions, including a 61-point, 23-rebound outburst against the Clippers on his birthday. He carried the Lakers to a league-high 67 wins and did so as possibly the most likable and entertaining superstar the league has ever seen. While the Lakers were one of the greatest teams in NBA history, but not the greatest, watch our breakdown of the top 10 greatest teams in NBA history next. Do you think we missed anybody on this list? Let us know in the comments below.